Okay. So here we go. Welcome everyone. So today you will need a block or two, or again, like thick books or a lexicon. We might also need a strap that can be, if you don't have a strap, like a yoga strap, then you can use a, a shawl, a towel, or a, a scarf. And uh, we're just gonna do the usual whole body flow. Um, I wanna focus more on, on heart openers and uh, back bends. But there will be a lot of modifications, and if you have lower back issues, then obviously I'd like you to pay attention to what you feel, how you feel, and if you need to sit out something, don't worry about it. Just make sure that everything feels uh, okay, and you're looking after yourself throughout the uh, practice. Um, but otherwise, yeah, so it should be fine for everyone, I think. There are no absolute beginners, I think, in this class now. Let's start on our back. So lying down nice and comfortably. And just for a couple of breaths, really, you can bring your arms beside you or placing one hand onto the belly, other one on the heart, doesn't really matter, as long as you're comfortable. And just close the eyes and uh, start to feel, feel the floor beneath you. Feel your body from the tippy toes up to the crown of the head. And then start to notice the breasts as well. If you have your hands on the belly and on the chest, you can feel the belly and the chest rise when you inhale. And then fold when they exhale, when you exhale. So these two things that we are being aware of. One is the body and the different sensations, feelings in the body. And the breath. And you might be tempted to go back into the head and start to think, think about maybe dinner or what's happening tomorrow, what has happened today, maybe work or, or anything from the day, but just acknowledge if there are thoughts arising and then bring your attention back into feeling and experiencing. Just a few more breaths here. And then open the eyes. So we're going to use one block or one big thick book. And we're going to start by placing the block. You can place the block. So if you have a yoga block, you can use this flat side. Or you can use the mid side as well. So a little bit taller. See how it feels. So I'm going to work with a flat position. And I'm just going to place it right under the sacrum area. The sacrum is the bottom of the spine. It's a nice bony, uh, a comfortable bony area. You're going to feel straight away when it's on the right, under the right spot. It doesn't want to be under the lower back where you're very archy. It wants to be a little bit lower. And then just release into the block with your hips. Your heels are going to root down into the floor. Arms can be beside you, nice wide. Just give yourself again a couple of breaths. So by elevating the hips slightly, you're gonna get a very little, very slight stretch in the front of the body. You might feel that you wanna do a little bit more. You can always just turn the block around again, make sure that you position it under the right spot. And then once again, extending the legs forward. Now, if this feels too much, whether it's the flat block or it's already standing up, just bend the knees slightly, just to release some tension from the front of the body and then hold it here. And then start to notice again how the breath works in the belly and the chest. So on the inhalation, the chest expands, and then on the exhalation, it sinks, contracts. A couple more. It 
it's easier to focus on the inhale here because you're already opening up the front of the body, so creating a little bit more space for that air. the shoulders, arms and legs sink, let go of your glutes as well, so start to trust the block or the book that you're lying on. And now bend the knees, press down through the feet, remove the block and we're going to sit ourselves up and we're going to use the block under the shoulder blades. So again, either flat or maybe the taller side. Then it goes right under the shoulder blade, so not under your lower back and not under the neck, in between. It's going to open up your heart space, so the chest bone will be lifted. The head releases back. Now the head, if the head is not touching the floor, you're going to need something else underneath the head for support. You can use another block or you can use maybe a pillow or a cushion. And then release the arms. So again, making sure that that block is under the right spot under the shoulder blades, across the spine, so it's nice and supportive, and releases back. And then we continue to focus on the front of the body. And then start to breathe into the area that you feel the more op most open. Start to breathe into the collarbones, the rib cages. And then on the exhale, letting go of any tension in your arms and shoulders, back of the neck, glutes. A couple of more breaths, staying present, staying in the body, not in the head, so feeling, not thinking. And then slowly lift the head, press down through the arms, sit up, remove the block, lie back on your back, just for a moment. And then we're going to roll around onto our tummy. You can keep the feet together or hip width apart, depending on how you feel in your lower back. If you feel tight, restricted, then keep some space between the feet. And then press down through the tops of the feet, press down through the pubic bones, squeeze the thighs, the knees try to lift away from the floor. Your arms are wide, and then very slowly lift yourself up into a sphinx pose. So, difference between sphinx and cobra is that in sphinx, just like the statue itself, you have the forearms on the ground. And you might want to have them a little bit wider, a little bit narrower, a little bit closer to you or a little bit further to the top of the mat, again, depending on how you feel in your lower back. So this is going to be a little bit more active than usual. We keep the legs active, the glutes start to activate as well. Press down through the hands, spread the fingers, and just extend through the crown of the head to the sky. And now very slowly, start to pull the palms towards the body while you're drawing the chest bone in between the arms towards the front. So they are not very moving, it's just a very slight little energetic movement, pulling the palms towards you while you're pushing the chest away from you. Your legs keep staying active, glutes as well, crown of the head to the sky. One more breath, push down through the pubic bone. And then slowly release. You can place the hands underneath the forehead and just sway, wiggle the hips, shake them a little bit out. And at this time, bring the hands in line with your, well, a little bit more forward than your shoulders and onto the edges of the mat. Or you can go even wider. Press down through the hands, activate the lower body, and on the next inhale, come into an easy cobra. So a little bit more arch in the spine, but only if it feels good. You can keep your elbows on the floor again. Or you can bring the hands even wider, maybe coming onto the fingertips. 
pressing down through the pubic bone, through the tops of the feet, squeeze the legs, and then again, very slowly, just start to pull the fingertips towards you. They are not really moving. Again, this is just an energetic pull. You're ro rolling the shoulders, shoulder blades towards one another, and telescoping the chest towards the top of the mat. Crown of the head to the sky, nice and active, the whole of the body. Feel how your lower back is working hard. One more breath. And then slowly release, releasing every single muscle in the body. Forehead to the ground, or on the tops of the head, shape at the butt. And then bring the hands underneath the shoulders and push back into child's pose. Sitting back onto your heels. Knees can be close to each other or wide. Relax the forehead down. If it doesn't touch the floor, you can place the hands on the, underneath or maybe your boot. Keep your arms reaching forward. Make your way into tabletop. And setting it up, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Straight away, squeezing the belly towards the spine. And then we continue with some cat and cow. On the inhale, we're going to arch the spine, looking towards the ceiling, or to the front. And then exhale around the back. Lift the belly button, lift the shoulder, base up the chin to the chest. Repeat, inhale to arch. And then exhale to mount. Few more at your own pace, focusing on the in breath and then the out breath. Inhale and exhale. One more inhale and then exhale. Coming back into neutral position, bring the knees a little bit closer. We're going to work with the legs and the hips. So on the inhalation, we're going to extend the right leg back. You can lift it as high as you can if it feels good. Otherwise, just reach it back. Squeeze the belly in and tuck the tailbone under slightly. Then on the exhale, hug the knee to the chest. Inhale, reach the leg away from you. And then on the exhale, step that right foot to the left side of the mat and look towards the left foot. Then inhale, reach it behind you. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale, reach it behind you. And then exhale, bend the knee and hug it towards the right, look towards the right. Inhale, reach it behind you. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, step to the left, look to it. And then inhale, reach back. Exhale, hug it in. One more. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, bend the knee, hug it to the right, look to the right. Inhale, behind you. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale, behind you. Exhale, to the left, look there. Inhale, back. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale, reach back. Exhale to the right. Bring the knee as close to the shoulder as you can. Inhale behind you. And then exhale, release. And you can just move the hips, the shoulders a little bit. Maybe in shaking out. The hands. And then coming back into your tabletop. And we do the same flow on the left side. Making sure that the alignment on the arms is right. Shoulders, elbows, wrists in one line. Knees a little bit closer to each other. And we start. On the inhale, we extend the left leg back, or maybe high. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale, extend. And then exhale, step the foot to the right, look towards it. Inhale, back behind you. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale behind you, bend the knee, reach it to the left shoulder, look to it. Inhale behind you, exhale, hug it in. Inhale behind you, exhale to the right, look to it. 
Inhale behind you. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale, reach back. And then left knee to left elbow. Reach it back. Exhale, hug it in. Last one. Reach it back. Left foot to right side. Look towards it. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale behind you. Left knee to left shoulder, look to it. Inhale back. And then exhale, release. Bring the knees together, feet together, and sit back into your child's pose. Back into tabletop. Here, a little bit of strength work. Curl the toes under. So this one, you can do on your knees as well, but if you want to challenge yourself and work on strengthening your legs and your arms, then lift the knees about 10 centimeters away from the floor. That's about, let's say about two inches, three inches, three inches more like. So we're gonna hold it like this. We don't wanna collapse into the shoulders. We're gonna lift away from the shoulders and you really wanna squeeze the thighs and the glutes. Gently turn the tailbone down. Take an inhale, and then on the exhale, keep the knees as high as they are, and sit back onto your heels, push the mat forward away from you. And then inhale, up to the sky, into your, well, tippy toes, then the downward facing dog on tippy toes. And then exhale, sitting down there, with the knees about 10 centimeters away from the floor. Take a big breath in, and then exhale, sitting back onto your heels, knees away from the floor, if you choose that option. And then slowly lift the bum into this high downward facing dog. Push the chest towards the thighs. And then back into tabletop with knees away from the floor. Two more of this. Push the hips down towards the heels. Push the hands down into the floor. And then up, bum up to the sky. Lift high through the bum, chest to the thighs. Back into this tabletop, last one. Squeeze the thighs, lifting away from the shoulders, sitting back onto the heels. Press the palms down, push the mat forward, and then lift your bum up to the sky. Press the chest towards the thighs. And then this time we're gonna draw the heels down towards the floor, staying in downward facing dog, and start to walk at your downward facing dog. You can shake out the head as well. If this is too much, you drop the knees down into your tabletop position. Bring the feet together. Raise the right leg up towards the sky. Push the chest towards the standing leg. And then bend the knee and step the foot between the hands. If it gets stuck, you take hold of it and pull it forward. Drop the back knee down to the floor. And then lift your chest up. Make sure that the knee on the floor is comfortable. If it isn't, you can fold up your mat for some extra support underneath. The front knee and ankle are in one line. And we're going to take a back bend here. Keep your right hand on the side and bring the left hand onto the sacrum. Again, so the center of the spine, bottom of the spine. Reach your right arm to the sky. Bring the arm, if you can, in line with your ear. Take a big breath in, lift to the fingertips. And then on the exhale, push the hips forward and then gently arch back. Reach with your chest bone high up to the hips. So there's more space between the ribs and the hips. Reach your arm back. One more breath. And then release both hands to the floor. Now walk the right foot out towards the right edge of the mat, maybe a little bit more forward to the corner of the mat and release the hips forward. We are going to start to move the hips circling. Rocking back and forth just to um, soften out the hip flexor on the left side and the back of the thigh on the right side. And then we're going to allow the hips to mat forward. So you're going to feel a deep stretch in the back of the right thigh and the front of the left thigh. You can stay on your hands or you can also use some blocks, maybe some uh, books underneath the forearms. 
So finding a height that is comfortable, you're gonna, so you want to feel something in the posture, but you don't wanna be overwhelmed by it. Remember, not too little, not too much. Something in between, but it feels that you're doing some work, but it's, uh, it feels safe as well. And then coming back onto the palms. But we keep the hips, release forward, press down to the left hand and take the right arm to the sky. And then start to twist as much as you can. Maybe your right knee wants to drop a little bit more to the right side and that's absolutely fine. You can stay here or bend the back knee, staying in this variation. You can also reach back, even if you can't touch the toes, you're reaching back with the foot and you're hugging the toes towards you. Maybe you're able to take hold of the foot. That's fine as well. So finding a variation where you're comfortable again. Hold it here for a sec. One more breath. And then release the foot. Hands back to center. We're going to push the hips back and walk the foot to the center of the mat. Half splits. You can use your blocks underneath the hands if you like. Keep the front knee as straight as you can. Take a deep breath in, lengthen through the spine. And then on the exhale, folding down, chest comes close to the thigh. Now maybe the chest won't come close to the thigh, and that's absolutely fine. As long as you feel the stretch in the back of the leg, maybe even in the back of the body, you're doing the right thing. Flex the foot, toes are curling towards you. Relax the head. Now you're very welcome to stay in this position. Otherwise, keeping the same position with your lower body, start to walk both hands to the right edge of the mat. And then while your chest is releasing towards the floor, you're also twisting the chest towards the right. So this will work on the muscles around your IT band, the side of the thigh. And that area is usually very, very tight, especially especially if you're sitting loads. If you're twisting to the right, come back to the front, bend the front knee, hands to the floor, step back into tabletop, and then move back into downward facing dog. If you don't fancy downward facing dog, you can always stay in your tabletop. Move it out a little bit, hips, head, moving the hands, fingers a little bit. And then we take it into the left side, bring the feet together, reach your left leg to the sky, hug the chest towards the thigh, and then bend the knee and step the foot between the hands. Drop the back knee down. Again, maybe a little bit of padding underneath that back knee. Slowly lift the chest, knee and collar line, and then keep your left hand on the thigh, your right hand comes onto the sacrum area, squeeze the belly in, lift the left arm to the sky, if you can, bring it in line with your ear, take a big breath in, lift through the fingers, and then exhale, push the hips slightly forward, and then start to lift the chest bone up, ribs away from the hips, arch back, reach with your arm back as well, Then slowly come up, hands to the floor. Walk the left foot out to the left edge of the mat. And then walk it a little bit more forward. And then start to release the hips forward as well. And then start to move. Slowly. So really slowly and just really trying to experiment, explore what feels good, how deep you want to go, you can go. And then after circling, you can also roll back and forth a little bit. And keep your attention partially on that knee on the floor. If at any point it gets uncomfortable, maybe use a, a, a towel underneath or a blanket. Make sure that the knees are fine. Okay, and then we're going to stay with the hips melting forward. Hands on the inside of that front foot. 
and you can stay on your hands. Maybe this is enough. Check in what's happening around the back of the left side, front of the right side. Maybe you want to come a little bit lower, but you don't want to place the forearm straight away to the floor. So you can use maybe your blocks or books. And we hold it here. Whew. And then maybe with the out breaths, we want to just sigh out the moon, make some noises, letting go of the tension. Another few breaths. And come back onto the hands, remove the block. Keep your right hand on the floor. Take the left arm to the sky and then start to twist. Again, the left knee might want to drop towards the floor and it's absolutely fine. Hold it here or bend the back knee. This is one variation. This is quite nice. Make sure that the back knee is comfortable. You can also reach back with your arm. So your arm reaches back. Nice opening in the chest while your heel hugs towards the butt. Maybe you're catching the foot, and then you're twisting a little bit more. Let go of the foot, push the hips back, walk the heel to the center of the mat. Half split, working with straight knee or as straight as you can get it, hands on the floor or on blocks. Take an inhale, lengthen through the spine, and then on the exhale, bow down. Your hips are pointing forward. Flex the foot, toes curling towards you. Sometimes I hop my toes a little bit to curl more. And then you can really feel the stretch in the calf muscle. From here, if you did on the other side, move the hands to the left side. Keep the chest low and then nicely twist as well. Wow. And then come back to center, bend the front knee, hands to the floor, step back into tabletop, and meeting in downward facing dog. Oh, oh it's so nice to arrive in downward facing dog. You can move it out a little bit, shake, wiggle, head as well. Let's start to walk the head and feet to the top of the mat. Riding in a forward bend, make it heavy with your head and the arms. Maybe swaying the hips, knees are bent. And very slowly start to roll yourself up, vertebrae by vertebrae. No rush. Last thing to arrive will be the head. Oh, excellent. Okay, so we are at the top of the mat and we're gonna do a couple of sun salutations. <laughs> and, uh, in each lunge pose, when we are on the floor, in our, during our sun salutations, we're going to do a different uh, posture. Bring the hands into prayer. Really press down through the feet, separate the toes, squeeze the thighs, gently tucking the tailbone under, squeezing the lower belly, shoulders, shoulder blades towards one another. On the next inhale, raise the arms, look up, arch back. And then exhale, foot forward, soften the knees, bowing down. Inhale for your halfway lift, lengthen through the crown of the head. And then step the right knee back into a low lunge. Reach your arms to the sky, hips forward, arch back. We're going to hold it here for a moment. Hips releasing forward, squeeze the belly in. Reach your arms back so they are in line with your ears, lift the chest bone high. One more breath, and then both hands to the floor. Step back, tabletop, downward facing dog. Press down through the heels towards the floor. Push the chest towards the thighs. Relax the head, tailbone to the sky. Inhale for high plank pose. 
Squeeze the glutes, squeeze the thighs, lifting through the shoulder blades. Then drop the knees lower down to the floor. Hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale for cobra pose. Table top. And then downward facing dog. Bring the feet together. Raise the right leg to the sky. Push the chest towards the thigh. And then step the foot between the hands. Drop the back knee down to the ground. Keep your left hand on the floor. And take the right arm to the sky and twist. Then curl the back toes under, you can stay here. Or lift the knee away from the floor and twist a little bit more. Bring both hands down to the floor. Step forward, forward bend, heavy head. Inhale, halfway lift. Folding down. Inhale and rise, look up, arch back. Hands into prayer. So while you're oh, breathing, what I like to do is usually have one back bend and then a twist because the twist is like a release after a back bend. So it's really good for your lower back. And we're going to do exactly the same on the left side. Inhale, arms to the sky, reach back, arch back, hips to the front. And then exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. And then step the left knee back into your low lunge. Keep your hips reaching forward. Make sure that the knee is comfortable. If not, then you have to bring the foot a little bit more forward. Squeeze the belly in, lift through the fingers high up to the sky. And then on the exhalation, arch back, reach your arms behind you. They are in line with your ears. Tuck the tailbone under, lift through the chest bone. One more breath, arch back more. Both hands to the ground, table top, downward facing dog. Inhale for high plank. Squeeze the whole of the body, lift to the shoulder blades. Drop the knees, slowly lower down. Inhale and cobra pose. Table top and downward facing dog. Feet together in the back of the mat. Lift your left leg to the sky. And then hug the knee to the chest. Step the foot forward, drop the back knee down. Keep your right fingertips on the floor and take the left arm to the sky. And twisting as much as you can and you might feel it in your lower back. Nicely stretching it out until after compressing it in your back bend. You can stay here or curl the back to it, curl the toes under, lift the back, lift the knee and then start to twist a little bit more. So the back knee is straight, the legs are strong. Both hands to the ground, step back, step forward, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Fall down. Inhale and rise, look up. Hands into Namaste. And we go again a little bit different, but the skeleton will be exactly the same. Inhale, arch the sky, arch. Exhale, fall forward. Inhale, halfway lift. And then step the right knee back. Lift your chest. The first thing we do is we are going to pad up the left knee, sorry, the right knee, and then lift ourselves up. Now, for this one, you might need a strap around the ankle. If you usually can't reach to the foot, then you're gonna need that strap or the shawl around the ankle. Or if you're wearing long, uh, leggings or tracksuit bottoms, you will be able to reach to the trousers, those leggings, the bottom of the leggings as well. <clears throat> so, starting by pushing the hips forward and then lifting the back knee away from the floor. You're not on the knee joint, you're just above the knee joint where the muscles of the thigh finish attaching to the knee joint. You can hold it here if you like. Or so, you can reach back and take hold of the foot with one hand. The other hand is maybe on the side or maybe on the floor. Well, not on the floor, but on a block if you're struggling with your balance. And then releasing the hips forward, but squeezing the belly and lifting the chest. If you have this left arm, left hand on the knee, and you're quite 
Help you to balance here. You can also reach the left arm to the sky. If you want to go further, you're going to reach that left arm up, back and take hold of the foot. And then instead of hugging the heel towards you, you're going to push the heel away to open up the chest more. Squeeze the belly and lift the ribs and the chest bone high up. A couple of more breaths. If you can't take hold of your ankle, take hold of the bottom of your leggings or perhaps the shawl around the ankle. One more breath, then let go of the foot, hands to the floor, step back into tabletop, downward facing dog. Ooh. And then after the back bends, it's always very nice to come into down dog because down dog is lengthening in the back of the body. So you feel it in the back of the leg and then lower back as well, keep four. Inhale for high plank. Then drop the knees and very slowly lower down onto your belly. I'm going to take locust pose here. Bring the arms beside you with your palms facing down to the floor. Press the pubic bone into the ground. Press the tops of the feet into the floor. Squeeze the thighs. Then on the next inhale, lift your arms, chest, head, and then the legs away from the floor. You're rolling the shoulders, shoulder blades towards one another. Lift the hands, lift the feet. And then lengthen through the crown of the head and through the toes. Hold it here. Breathe. Look to the top of the mat. The back of the neck is long. One more breath. And release. Hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale for cobra pose. Tabletop. And then downward facing dog. Bring the feet together, reach your right leg to the sky, and then step the foot between the hands, drop the back knee down. Again, if you need to, hold up the mat. I'm actually reminding myself because I need that padding, and then I keep forgetting it, and I keep hurting my knee. So lifting the chest up, bring the arms to the sky, Take an inhale and then on the exhale, twist towards your right. The arms are nice and wide, palms facing to the right side. You place the left hand to the outside of the right knee and you have two options here, placing the right hand onto the left hip, pressing the hands into the body, using it as leverage to twist your chest to the right, or you can bend the back knee and take hold of the back foot with your right hand, not pulling the heel to the butt. Your elbow is straight, the foot is nicely, just rooting down towards the floor through the hand. Twist a little bit more. If you're wobbling, just really ground down through that front foot. Oops, like myself, <laughs> trying. Then let go of the foot, hands to the floor. Step forward into a forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift, fall down. Inhale and rise, hands into prayer. And the same on the left. Inhale, arms to the sky, look up, arch. And then exhale, foot forward. Inhale, halfway lift, step the left knee back into low lunge. Remember the padding. <laughs> And then rise. So coming into that nice back bend, release the hips forward. Again, be aware of your front knee, how it feels. Bend the back knee, take hold of the back foot or taking hold of your short. And then just hold it here for a moment to find your balance. Maybe you need a block under the right hand for that support. If you don't need that, you can keep the hand on the knee or extend the right arm to the sky. Or if you want to go to the next stage, you're going to reach the right hand back, take hold of the foot with both hands, and then gently guide the heel away from you, allowing your chest to open up, burst open. Lift the chest, the ribs away from the hips, hold it there, breathe.
and then release the foot, hands to the floor, stepping back into tabletop, downward facing dog. Pressing down through the heels, lifting the bum high, your knees can stay soft. And then move the chest and the armpits towards the thighs and the knees, heavy head. Inhale for high plank. Take a big breath in. Drop the knees, lower down to the ground. And we're going to turn around onto our back. And we will be doing a little bit more lower back, lower back bends. We can also work on the thighs here, but for, for, for now, just lie on your back. Get a couple of breaths here. Okay, so coming into supported bridge pose, you're going to need your blocks or bricks or uh, books if you have. So if you have two books, two thick books, then you're going to place them on top of one another like this. Bend the knees and then slide the blocks underneath the sacrum. You might actually need another one, but let's see how, how we go. Or, yes. Um, whether this is enough. If you have blocks like myself and you have that flexibility in the lower back, you're going to lift your hips a little bit higher and bring the two tall blocks really squeeze together underneath the sacrum. But this is actually where we were at the beginning of the class, just a little bit lower. Holding it here, a few breaths. And then if you like to, you can also walk the feet forward. So this is now very, very similar to the pose that we, that we were in right at the start. But if this creates too much pressure, too much compression in the lower back, then just bend the knees again. Okay, bring the feet flat onto the ground. So working now on the thighs. And then Lift the knee and take hold of the top of the foot or the top of the toes. And then you're going to slide the top of the toes onto the floor underneath you. So your heel is pointing up towards the butt and the toes are pointing towards the shoulders. And you don't want to allow the knee to roll out. You want to hug the knee in so it looks towards the center line. Try to relax the shoulders and the jaw. If you are lower a little bit, that might be a little bit difficult to get the foot underneath you. You might need another book. So go and grab one. You have a nice elevated hip and there is space for your foot to be right underneath you. Keep rolling the knee in and try to relax with your shoulders, with your hips and with your jaw and breathe. For the last three, four breaths, you can hold it here. If you want to go a little bit further down, further into the pose, you place the hands to the ground and you're going to hug the left knee to the chest and reach the left leg to the sky. So right knee pointing behind you, center line of the body, the left leg reaches up and it reaches down towards the chest. Give yourself another two breaths. And then place the left foot back to the floor. Hug the right knee to the chest. Oh, it feels nice. And then place the foot down to the ground. We have the left side, guys, now. Huh? Just wiggle the toes a little bit. They probably feel very, very squeezed now. The right foot on the floor. Lift the left knee. And then with your left hand, take hold of the top of the left foot and then slide it underneath you with your toes pointing towards your armpit and the heel pointing up towards the butt. Release the shoulders down towards the floor and if the knee starts to flare up to the left, 
draw it back in towards the center line. Try to relax the shoulders, relax the jaw. If it is too much for your lower back, just bring the toes a little bit further away from your shoulder. Also, if you're intentionally tucking the tailbone under, so instead of curling the hips down, you're gonna lift them up, the tailbone lifts high towards the floor. That will lengthen through the lower back, which will you know, just get rid of some of the compression. And then for the last few breaths, if you wanna go there, you don't have to, you can stay here. You're going to hug the right knee to the chest, as close to the chest as you can, and then straighten the knee as much as you can. Lift the toes to the sky and hug the right thigh towards you. One more breath here. Then bend the knee. Place the right foot down and then bring the left foot to the ground as well. Lift your hips, remove your blocks. Bring the feet wide and just whisker wide with your knees from side to side. Extend the legs to the back of the mat and then roll back onto your belly. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale for cobra pose. Tabletop and downward facing dog. So don't forget, we have one more pose left in this floor which is going to be a twist and it's going to feel amazing after the back bends. Bring the feet together, raise the left leg to the sky and then step the foot between the hands, drop the back knee down, remember the padding. Lift the chest. Knee and collar aligned. And then arms to the sky, inhale, exhale, twist to the left. Open arms, palms facing towards the left side. Bring your right hand to the outside of the left knee. Press it into the outside of the knee and with your knee press back. You can bring the left hand around behind you and place it onto the right hip, right buttock. Or bend the back knee and take hold of the back foot. Instead of hugging it, just gently pull it away from you so your elbow stays uh, straight. Then press your right hand into the knee and start to twist more towards the left side. If you can't take hold of your foot, don't worry about it. Just keep your hand on the other side, on the right side somewhere. You can always just tailor make the pose. Whichever twist you like to take, just take it after the back bend. Right now. Release, hands to the floor. Step forward into a forward bend. Soften the knees. With the two piece fingers, take hold of the big toes. On the next inhale, lift halfway up, lengthen through the spine. And then exhale, folding down, relax the head. Now you can hold it here, just really, really passive, very easy, heavy. If you want to make it a little bit more active, then press down through the toes. Pull with your fingers into the toes and then start to pull the chest towards the thighs with your elbows pointing back and you're lifting the shoulders away from your ears to elongate the neck, traction out of the neck. And if you have that kind of uh, intention, then you can also straighten the knees and lift your tailbone to the spine. That's your hugging the knee into the chest, chest into the knee.
and let go of the foot. Soft base, slowly, slowly rise. Oh, excellent. Okay, feet gonna stay hip width apart. Raise the arms and then come onto the tippy toes, lifting as high as you can. Take a big breath in and then start to bend the knees very slowly, lowering down the buttocks. A little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower until they hit the heels. And they're gonna slowly sit back. Feet on the floor, my arms reaching forward, nice open chest, a quick boat pose just to activate the core. And then if the heels toes away from the floor, you can lift the feet in line with your knees. Maybe you want to go really crazy and straighten the knees up to you. You can also bring the hands behind the thighs. Now roll the shoulders back, chest is nice open. One more breath. And then slowly place the feet to the floor, press down through them, and very slowly release the lower back, mid back, and then shoulder blades and upper back to the floor. Take a full body stretch, extending through the arms, through the legs. And the quick back release pose after the many back bends. We'll bend the knees, take the feet, onto the floor, and then bring the right ankle onto the left thigh, just below the knee, but it's nice and fleshy there, so you're not touching the knee joint. Flex the right foot, and then draw the right knee away from you. Your arms are still on the floor. And then first we're gonna do the active vari variation, and then we're gonna come into the passive variation of this posture. And start to hug the left knee towards you, now both feet are flexed. With your left knee, you're drawing the right foot towards you. But at the same time, you're pushing the right knee away from you. Now my belly is working really, really hard now, my abdomen, and my thighs as well. This is the active variation. Now take your hands and bring them behind that left thigh. You can use a shawl around the thigh if you can't take the fingers right behind it. And then pull the knee a little bit closer to you while you're pushing that right knee away from you. So this is a, neck, a back release pose, lower back release, but it's also a nice hip opener. You might find that you can feel the right hip and the right thigh is well stretching out. Stay here or extend the left leg to the spine. And keep hugging the left knee closer to you while you're drawing the right knee away from you. Try to roll the shoulders down. Slightly tuck the chin towards the chest, release the jaw. Few more breaths. And then slowly place the foot to the ground. And now squeeze the thighs together. So you're wrapping the two thighs towards one another. Bring the hips towards the right side and draw both knees to the left. If this is not comfortable, you can just place the two knees on top of one another. Arms are now wide. And you can look towards the right fingers. Draw the knees back to center. On the reward, the legs, give them a little shake. We come into the other side. So left ankle over the right thigh, flex the left foot and push the knee away from you. Arms on either side of the body. And on the next inhale, start to hug that left knee, right knee, so right knee towards you. Flexing now both feet and drawing the left knee away from you while your right leg is trying to come closer and closer to you. I'm really working hard with the thighs, with the abdomen, 
And now bring the hands behind the thigh. You're using your shawl around that right thigh. Palm of the leg closer to you. Hold it here or extend the right leg to the sky. Take another breath here. And then slowly bring the foot back to the floor. Bring the two sides together with the left on top. Bring the hips towards your left and then drop the knees to the right. Arms are right, looking towards your left fingers. Bring the knees back to center, unriver the legs. And this time, hug the knees into the chest. Give yourself a big hug. Take a breath in. And then exhale, lift the head. Bring the forehead close to the knees. Make yourself into a little ball. Hug in. And then release. Lie on your back, coming into Shavasana. Sending the legs away from you. Keeping some space in between the feet, arms beside you, palms facing up towards the ceiling. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Hold it in. And then open the mouth, letting go. Close the eyes. Staying here for a couple of minutes. Letting go of the whole of the body. Very slowly, start to bring your attention back into the body, back into the breath. Wiggle the fingers and the toes. Roll the head from side to side. Start to move the arms, the legs. And then bring the arms over the head. Stretch out. Draw the knees into the chest. Maybe rock from side to side a couple of times. And then roll over onto one side of the body. Maybe using the lower arm as a pillow under the head. 
and slowly sit yourself up. Take a comfortable seated pose. Keep your eyes closed, lifting through the crown of the head, bring the hands into prayer. We take one last breath together, inhale. Open the mouth, let go, go. Bring the thumb knuckles into the forehead center. And together we say, Namaste. And we bow down. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoy the class. Thanks, Eva. That was great. It's Charlotte. I'll, I'll send you the forms as well.